I was going to tell you, welcome to Leonard's Fort Baptist Church Bible Study. Uh, today, is, I'm Butch Ross, and <clears throat> we're going to do a Sunday school lesson from our quarterly. <clears throat> and today's lesson is secured. And I would just like to tell you, we're going to be in Romans chapter 8, pages uh, verses 12 through 25. And let us pray. Dear Lord, we'd like to thank you for the day you gave us, Lord. Lord, we thank you for each and every blessing. We thank you for our church. We ask, ask you to be with each and every church member, Lord. Lord, we ask you to touch them in a special way. Lord, we say a special prayer for our pastor and his wife. We know he's wanting to preach. And Lord, we just ask you that each and every one of us will be taking your message to this lost and dying world Lord, we ask a special prayer for upon our country today, Lord, with everything that are going on. We just ask that Christians will pray for our country, and Lord, it will be spreading the word, so Lord, that each and every person can feel secured here today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Again, uh, today's lesson is secured. And we're coming out of Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 25. And it says, All who accept the gospel have a hope for a future as children of God. And we have a sure hope. And we're unable to fulfill. You know, as humans, we cannot fulfill the law. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we all will suffer death. It's just some of us will die and go to hell. And some of us will die and go to heaven. Now, unless Christ comes back before we pass. But Jesus died on the cross to make a way for our sins to be forgiven. And he will sit at the right hand of the Father. And on judgment day, he will say, his sins are covered with my blood. Freeing us from the penalty of sin and death. And in Romans 8, Romans chapter 8 is one of the greatest chapters in the Bible. <coughs> uh, it starts out. In verse 1, the, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. What a good feeling that is. And then when it ends with verse 39, it says nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Oh, Lord. You know, nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Nothing can ever separate us from the feeling his peace and just he knows that he will never leave us or forsake us and then Paul states that there are two possible ways to live in, on this earth in this body we either going to live according to the flesh which will result in death or we will live according to the spirit which results in life and peace and to have the Holy Spirit come live inside of you all you have to do today is accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But the Spirit puts to death the sins of the body, and will have and you will have eternal life. And then we come to verses 12 and 13. And it says, So then, brothers and sisters, we're not obligated to the flesh to live according to the flesh, because if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live forever. And you know, the what we need to think about is, we just need to think about what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us. We just need to be so appreciative of him that we live in such a way that we'll point others to Christ. And then we come over to verses 14 and 15. Verses 14 and 15 says, For to all those led by God's Spirit are God's sons. You did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Instead, you received a spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. You know, for those led by God's Spirit, the question is, do you allow His Spirit to actually lead you? Now, you can be saved and washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, and that will save you from ever going to, to the devil's hell. 
you'll spend eternity one day with the Lord Jesus Christ. But while we're on this earth, you will have a chance each and every day to choose, do I live for God today or do I allow the flesh to overtake me? And so, you know, we got to allow the Spirit to direct our lives. And as a shepherd guides his sheep, the believers follow God. The Spirit walking, not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And that's in Romans verse 4 of chapter 8. And we're believers, enter God's family through adoption. And, and you know what a great thing that is. Uh, when you have kids, uh, they're your children from now on. But God actually chose us through adoption. And that means that he looked at us and he loved us. And he sent his son to die on that cross for us so we could be adopted into his family. And I, and I tell this a whole lot in Sunday school, but I love this poster when it used to be up at the post, house, post office when I was younger is when they had uncle picture uncle sam and they would want people to come into the army and they'd say i want you and i can always i can just picture god in heaven pointing down towards butch ross saying i want you <clears throat> and you know when i was saved i was adopted into the family of god and we are believers are able to call god father not just god father and then we come to verses 16 and 17. Verses 16 and 17 says, The Spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we're God's children. And if children also heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. You know, uh, when it's talking about in verses 16 and 17 that the spirit will testify to us that means he'll come and comfort us and he will also be with us we can feel the spirit of god and you know we're not only children of god but we're also heirs of god and that's what it tells us in this verse that means we will inherit heaven someday but we're also co-heirs with christ and when we also inherited Christ's suffering, as long as we're in this world, we'll go through trials, tribulations. We'll have people make fun of us. We'll have people who don't believe us. But as long as we are in this world, we will go through trials and tribulations. And, and that's what Jesus did. But you know what? Look at verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. You know, this present suffering uh, we must endure is it, pale in comparison to what heaven will be like when we get there. And what a glorious, glorious day that's going to be. And then we come to verses 19 through 21. And it says in verses 19, 21, it says, For the creation eagerly waits with anticipation for God's sons to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in the hope that the creation itself will also be set free from the bondage to decay, from the glorious freedom of God's children. <clears throat> you know, the suffering Paul described was not just human suffering. When Adam and Eve sinned, God cursed the ground because of Adam. It tells us in Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Creations came, uh, just feels like there is no hope in creation. And that came from sin. And a lot of times, we as humans will be in sin and we will feel like we have no hope and nowhere to turn. But let me tell you, God tells us he will never leave us or forsake us. And, and you know, hope is possible 
only through the Lord Jesus Christ. And all of creation will be set free through the Lord Jesus Christ. And God promises a new heaven. He promises a new earth. And, and tells us that in Isaiah. And then look in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 13, where righteousness will dwell. You know, when the new heaven and the new earth gets here, righteousness will prevail on this earth forever. And we come to verses 22 and 23. It says, For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together with labor pains until now. You know, when, when Eve and Adam and Eve sinned, and God told Eve that she would suffer during childbirth, and she would have groaning, and she'd have labor pains, and it would be such an intense pain. But you know what? All creation groans with those kinds of pains. We as believers, we groan. Non-believers, they groan. They have a void inside of them. If you're a non-believer and you do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have a void inside of you that groans for the God. But as long as you do not accept God, then you will try to fill that void with things like alcohol and sex and, and other sins that will come about and other things that will destroy your life if you allow it. And you will never find comfort. You'll never find peace. You'll never find anything like the Lord Jesus Christ. And so hope is only possible through the Lord Jesus Christ. But just as creation groans, so believers, we groan inside of ourselves a lot of times. And you know what? Just as creation decays, we're going to decay. Uh, I teach a little bit of an older class, and, and we talk all the time about our aches and pains and how much it's hard to get out of bed this morning. But our bodies are crippled uh, by sin. And, and you know, uh, I read a thing and, and, and studied even though science said this, and I love to read stuff that proves the Word of God. It says without sin coming against the body like diseases and different things that our body would live forever and you know it tells us in Genesis that God created man to live forever but our bodies now are crippled by sin relationships too often are characterized by our ego and our pride and we have the spirit as the first fruits you know looking in uh Verse 22 and 23, it says, For we know that the whole, all right, I read 22, but verse 23 says, Not only that, but we ourselves have the Spirit as the first fruits. We also groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. You know, uh, our bodies, again, are crippled, and, and we have ego, and we have pride. But but also it tells us in, in verse 23, we have the Spirit as the first fruits. And, and that's what we're to take to the storehouse each time, is the first fruits. And that's what he says about our tithing. And we're not getting into tithing today, but we're supposed to tithe 10% off the top of our first of our fruits not the end of what we have left, off the first. And you know, when he's talking about the first fruits, you know which tomatoes are always the best. I love to eat tomato sandwiches. But the, my favorite time of year is when they first come out and you get that first fine ripe tomato, and that's that first fruits. And you know what? That's the way the Spirit gives to us. But the Holy Spirit is only a sign of what to come. We're only seeing just a little bit here on earth. And we're, in fact, it says we're adopted as children of God and also adopted by the Holy Spirit. And that is a sign that we have glorious freedom as God's children. And it's fully revealed. And we will see him one day. We will see him one day face to face. And in that day, God will free our bodies from decay and corruption. 
when we die and we go into the ground and our spirit goes to heaven, one day we're going to have a new body and a new soul, mind. And then we come to verses 24 and 25. And it says, Now in this hope we're saved, but hope that is seen is not hope, because who hopes for what he sees? Now if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with patience. Uh, although we have been saved and given, the Spirit again is the first fruits, and we're adopted into the family. You know what? We must wait with patience. And how many of us have much patience? Okay, as long as we're still here in this earth, we're going to be in a fallen world, and, and we're going to be waiting on our glorified bodies. But we must wait with patience. And then we need to approach the suffering and the trials of this present life with patience because this life is just temporary. And one of these days, we will see Jesus face to face. And in the close here today, I, I made a copy of the song, What a Day, What a Day That Will Be. And I'm going to read through the words of this song because, you know, a lot of times when people are singing songs, we don't really pay attention to the words that they're saying. But I like to print them off the Internet and just read through them and what comfort that gives me. It says, There's coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. Then the second verse says, What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. And you know what? That should just make us so excited we just jump up and cheer like we're either a wrestling match or a football game or something. We should be excited. When it takes me by the hand. You know, he's, I can just see how he reaches and gets us by the hand and he walks with us through life and he leads me to the promised land. You know, it says, yea, though I work, walk through the valley of the shadow of death in the 23rd Psalm, I will fear no evil or thou art with me. And you know, we just lost Kirby, my father-in-law, and I can picture him the day he went home about 11.15 on that Tuesday of God taking him by the hand and walking him to that promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. And then it says, there will be no sorrows there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no more pain, no more parting over there, and forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. And then it says, What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, again, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me to the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. And then, you know, we just need to think about those things. And there will be no more sorrows, no more pain. No more anything for the day that will be. Let us close in prayer. Dear Lord, we'd like to thank you for the food. We, Lord, I'm saying the blessing. Lord, we'd like to thank you again for this time together. And Lord, we ask again a special prayer upon each and every one of our church members, Lord. We just ask you to bless and protect them. And Lord, we pray that you'll lay your hand upon this country. And Lord, that this country will turn back to you and that Christians will be praying, Lord. And Lord, not only praying, but we'll be living that example that lets others know that we're yours. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now, Hunter, this thing might have turned off.